So we're here at uh, Marvell, and uh, you're launching a new solution here for Wi-Fi. That's right. Uh, hi, I'm, this is Javaz from Marvell Semiconductor. Uh, we have announced today Marvell 8997 chipset, which is a 2x2 two 11AC two, Wave 2 uh, combo in 28 nanometer. It also supports Bluetooth 5.0 technology. Uh, it's, it's the smallest, most power efficient chipset which is going to go into uh, smartphones, tablets, TVs, gaming, set-top boxes. So, uh, you, you call it Avastar. This is your uh, Wi-Fi? What is that? Yeah, so Avastar is our, is, our, is our family of products for wireless connectivity. Uh, so, today we have uh, Avastar 88, 87 and 88, 97 products. One by one AC, two by two AC. Uh, again, going into all kinds of uh, computing devices, mobile devices, gaming. Uh, going forward, this will be our new chipset, uh, 8997. Uh, again, a Vastar family, uh, you know, uh, going into all these different market segments. Is this, is this an ARM processor? What is this? Uh, this is based on an ARM core. Uh, it has an integrated ARM core. Do you say which one? Uh, is it Cortex-M something? Or it's a Cortex-M it? series. Uh, yeah? Yeah. And, uh, so uh, and, and then what is what is the trick? What is Marvel really doing in the in this kind of chip? Yeah, so I, think, I think that the trick really is that uh, the, the especially you know the, the new feature about this 8997 that it's it's built in 28 nanometer, which is a very low power process technology, and we're able to sh uh, reduce the current consumption by over 40 percent, uh, which is a huge reduction in current consumption for battery operated devices. Uh, All right. So right here you're showing a bunch of, uh, you are basically in the rock chip Chromebooks. That's right. Uh, so you are in the Chromebook with the higher, the Hisense, That's right. the rock chip 3288. Yeah. And so uh, you provide their Wi-Fi and, and Bluetooth? That's right. So uh, Marvel today has a leadership position in, in the Chromebook space. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, today we are shipping on Samsung, Acer, uh, HP Chromebook and, and recently Rock chip uh, based uh, Chromebooks also high sense and higher. So basically, uh, Google has it as a condition that the the Chromebook needs to have a good Wi-Fi, and so you right. can't just go with a cheap, bad quality from somebody else. Is that it? Th that's right. I mean, I think we have uh, we have always been in the leadership position. Uh, you know, we're with the, with the Google Chromebooks. We are always first to qualify. Uh, you know, they have they have certain requirements to qualify for the Chromebook. You have platform. to be a stable, good Wi-Fi. Is that it? You have to have a robust, robust connect, connection. You know, solid uh, quality Wi-Fi. You know, good Bluetooth. Overall performance has to be excellent to go into these devices because these Chromebooks are all about you know cloud connectivity. So Wi-Fi has to be super good. This is really important. And are you the best? We are. Who's your competitor? Well, uh, usual suspects, you know, uh, we had the Broadcom is out there, Intel is out there, Qualcomm is out there. Uh, we beat all of them in this. You beat uh, all of them in what? In uh, when it comes to Chromebook performance, you know, in, in Wi-Fi, uh, you know, being being first to to qualify on on, on Google Chromebook uh, platforms, we are number one. So it needs to be instantly connected, quickly searching the Wi-Fi's, connecting. You're good at that, and the bandwidth, and the range. Absolutely right. Yeah. So, so the Chromebooks today they are using the two by two 11 AC, uh, which all of these, uh, um, all all of the Chromebooks they are using right here? two by two. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This so, one too. The yeah, Samsung. So, so some of them are 11 and two by two. The newer ones, for example, like Hisense yeah. and higher, they are 11 AC two by two. So this uh, uh, so two by two doubles the the range. So your effective rate over range. Yeah, uh, improves and it doubles, so you have more robust connection. So how does it work? Is there a, a two by two right here? Does that mean there's two antennas, or how does it work? Yes, so it has two antennas. Uh, Where do they put them usually? Uh, usually, you know, they, they spread it out so that the performance is optimized. So it's maybe even down here, up uh, there, behind, or somewhere. You know, it's hard to say. All these yeah? uh, OEMs they do different configurations for antenna based on you know what are the other antennas inside the device. That's important too, right? The antenna. Oh. You don't make the antenna, do you? We we. We don't do antennas ourselves, but we provide some expertise to help our OEMs, you know, do their antenna designs. So you work with the antenna suppliers? Uh, we don't d work directly with them, uh, but you know, we do uh, do some characterization on antennas, and we tell our OEMs that hey, you know, if you do this kind of placement, you're gonna get best performance with the two by two. You know, if you wanna do a Bluetooth antenna, also you can do this. So. 
we make suggestions to them based on our expertise. Are you uh, in the, this solution, is it in the Chromecast? Because Chromecast is important Wi-Fi too, right? Uh, it's very important Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I I can't I can't say what solution is in the new Chromecast because it's not announced. Because yet. these yeah. these solutions that you're talking about right here and this one, uh, this is module. Does that mean you always work as a module, or do you go directly in the PCB? Uh, it How goes it in all form factors. So that's why you know we. Uh, in this solution, you can see uh, this is uh, CSP, uh, what is which, that? Which, which can which can be directly chip on board solution on a PCB. Uh, then you can go a QFN form factor. So QFN is uh, is, is basically it's it's a package uh, which can also go directly as in like a chip on board configuration. And then finally we have module options. This particular module right here, this is called a M2 2230 module, which is an industry standard. Uh, spec. Uh, this can plug in directly into a PCIe form factor into, you know, for example, like an Intel Bay Trail or, or any of those processes which are, which, you know, which are which you've seen in uh, most of the laptops and Chromebooks and so on. So this is used for qualification purposes uh, and, you know, so... So how do uh, uh, manufacturers choose one or the other? Why would they choose one or the other? Yeah, so Does it take longer time to integrate it on the board so they do just a module? I think it's really a cost uh, decision and a performance de decision for an OEM. So obviously if you do chip on board, it's, it's the lowest cost. Uh, but if you want to do highest performance, you, know, you, you want to engage a module partner you know, who can do the qualification for you, who can do the testing for you and really give you a, a turnkey solution which is good to go for an OEM. So that's why you would use the module, it's for turnkey? Uh, for, for turnkey solution which is good to go and then the other advantage is that once you have a module done, you, you've done the certification and all that, you know, all the qualification is done. So you can take that module and you can, you know, basically flatten it out to, you know, multiple products. Uh, so you don't have to qualify it again. So I'm not an expert at all, but I would guess that the onboard solution is lower power consumption than the module? Um, actually, I, I don't think that current consumption uh, would be much different between a chip on board solution versus a module solution because really I think that's that's the chip's capability. For example, you know, this chipset right here, the 8997, this is built based on 28 nanometer process technology and we have reduced the current consumption by over 40% which is a huge improvement, you know, on, uh, on top of any existing solutions which are out there in the market. 40% compared to the previous one? Uh, to, to our own pre pre chipsets, predecessors, as well as we think, you know, it's going to be very competitive in the market because today there is no... Uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth combo chip in the market built on 28 nanometer process technology. So we've done a lot of, uh, uh, you know, power islanding and memory architecturing in, in a way that it's going to be really, really low power. What is a nanometer in the previous generation? 40 nanometers. So there's 40? So 40 nanometer going, going to 28. To 28 nanometer. What's, is this the demo of a real one? That's a, that's a real demo. Uh, 8997. Uh, we just got this back, uh, chip back in our in our lab like two weeks ago. So we wanted to bring this out in a board, just play a simple YouTube video uh, using a 2.4 gigahertz, uh, you know, channel, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's good to go. It's uh, it's, uh, lasting. it's working. It's it's working. It's so, uh, what is this Wave Two? <laughs> is that the next thing? Yeah, so uh, 11 AC Wave 2 uh, is a new feature which enables multi-user MIMO. Uh, multi-user MIMO uh, is, is a new feature for 11 AC which uh, essentially really in increases the overall network throughput uh, per client. So if, when, once you have multiple devices on, on one network, so with multi-user MIMO, each client can, can, can gain more throughput and get, get more robust connectivity to the internet. So, so that's the trick. Every time with Wi-Fi, they find ways to combine several antennas, and then now the next thing is, even with many users, they're still going to get faster bandwidth somehow. Absolutely. I How think, does uh, is this some kind of magic, or well, the progression is amazing, right? So you started with a simple 11B, 11G technologies, then you went to 11A, which was addition of five gig band. Then you went to 11AC, you know, then you went to 2 by 2s so now multi-user MIMO, and I think this progression is amazing, and it goes on, and we're very what's excited to be part of that. Wave 2 and the previous, what's the difference in <laughs> bandwidth? It's not doubling or something. What's going on? So, uh, uh, what's the announcement? Really, I think the bandwidth is still, with 11AC, the bandwidth is still 80 megahertz. Uh, the, the progression really is this 
multi-user MIMO technology uh, which really improves the uh, network efficiency and it can pump more throughput over the network so it's, it's an overall more efficient network uh, where multiple devices all of them can have a more robust connection. And what is Bluetooth 5.0? So, uh, good question. Uh, so today, today uh, we hear about Bluetooth 4.2, which is uh, which is where the spec is today. Now, Bluetooth SIG is is going to do a major upgrade uh, on Bluetooth ne early next year. Uh, it's called the Shanghai release. So uh, we don't know whether it will be Bluetooth 4.3 or 5.0. Uh, but what we have done is we've done some future proofing for our. Uh, Wi-Fi chipsets and combos. So we've added hardware support for most of the features which are going to be part of the Bluetooth 5.0. Uh, so when it gets announced, our chips will be kind of future-proof and will support features like BLE location, LTE coax, uh, 2 megabits per second LE. So a lot of cool features, especially related to BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy Technology, uh, which are which are going to be in the in the future Bluetooth 5.0 release. So this chip will have future support for that. Is it some somehow you can guarantee that? Uh, How about if they add stuff to 5.0 that or 4.3 that somehow you couldn't cover because you didn't know? Well, there's, there will always be stuff that you can't cover, right? Because is the software it's, it's, update? It's, it's a it's a rolling spec. It's not frozen yet for for from the Bluetooth six standpoint. So today, where we stand, we know that most of the major features are rolled in, and we've added support for that. But if there's, there's something in the future, obviously, you know, our future chipsets will have those. All right. So you you said there was what's it called a uh, b better bandwidth, and there was those three things. Uh, the LTE doesn't interfere with it or something? Yeah, yeah so, so the main features for Bluetooth 5.0, number one, the LE throughput is doubling. So you're going from one megabit per second to two megabit per second LE. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is LTE coax, uh, where, you know, it, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a basically an addition, additional uh, software and hardware to improve coax with LTE devices as well as with other Bluetooth devices which are operating in the neighborhood. That's number two. Number three, very important feature is, is BLE location. So indoor location is hot. Uh, you know, Wi-Fi indoor location is being solved through some technologies. BLE angle measurements are going to be used in order to identify the, uh, the, the relative direction of different objects. So kind of compass-like functionality uh, that you can do with BLE. Now add, add Wi-Fi location to it, which can tell you distance. So now you have a full solution. You, you can tell that, hey, you know, that person is, is standing in that direction 10 meters away. So it's going to be reliable indoor navigation. It's going to be extremely reliable, sub one meter location accuracy, you know, precise indoor navigation. Positioning, uh, what's called orientation. You can do orientation, you can use, you know, so depending upon the device, right, so you can use Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, you could use sensors, and then you could, you could add all kinds of, you know, other like fingerprinting technologies and PDR to make it really more accurate. With two waves, did you add more antennas? Is that why it's like this, or, or is it the same number of antennas uh, as so, before? Uh, so with the two by two, right, either you can use uh, two antennas and, and basically share the Bluetooth antenna, or uh, you could use three antennas where you know you dedicate a third antenna to Bluetooth so that when Wi-Fi and Bluetooth when they're both operating so they don't uh, impact uh, you know the bandwidth or the throughput used by each other so uh, yeah so here we are demoing a three antenna solution we can do two antenna we can do three antenna it really depends upon the customer design